Hey everybody, it's Suzanne A. Wells, and this is episode number 29 of eBay the Right Way. Today's date is October 6th, 2021, and we have the dumpster diving grandma, <laughs> Julie Gambino, also famous on the $100 Super Size Sales thread on my Facebook group and the videos on YouTube. So we're going to chat with her in just a minute. Before I bring her on, I wanted to share a testimonial with you because this one just blew my mind. Jessica sent me this message. She said, Suzanne, I've been listening to your podcast while working around the house and one day you were talking about how we should be sure to check out the entire thrift store, not just our specialty area. My specialty is books, so I usually just hit up the book section and leave. But that afternoon, after listening to this particular episode, I went to my local thrift store, inspired to browse every section. And better yet, they were having a $2 a bag of books sale, so the cost was about five cents. I've sold this particular copy in the past, and it sold for $450. So I was over the moon to have spotted another one. I went home, listed it for $899, and accepted a best offer of $750. I just wanted to say thank you. Without your podcasts and constant inspiration and advice, I would never have ventured out of my comfort zone that day and found this book. Thanks again and take care. And I'm sure everyone wants to know the name of this book so you too can look for it. It's called Your Annotated Illustrated College Survival Guide by Patrick Rothfuss. That is spelled R-O-T-H-F-U-S-S. -S. So you can look that up on eBay or the internet or wherever and confirm this information. I am looking at her completed listing. It's a, uh, it's like one of those composition books that have the black and white speckles on the front, but also very bold uh, strips of color that say your college survival guide. So it's one of those that has a very distinct look to it and not easy to describe on a podcast where you can't see a picture of it. <laughs> but again, it's called your annotated illustrated college survival guide. So I encourage you to look that up so that you can see a photo of it and you will know what to look for when you are looking through the books. Okay, that's amazing. I just love getting these types of messages and emails because um, it just makes me feel like the information I'm putting out there is helping people. And that's why I do this is so that everybody can be more successful because really in this business, knowledge is power. And the more you know, the more money you're going to make. So that being said, that's a perfect segue into the interview with Julie. So here we go. Okay, everybody. Today we have Julie Gambino that you may recognize from the eBay Supersize $100 sales threads. Where are you located, Julie? I'm actually just outside of Chicago, um, across the border into Indiana in a small town called Dyer, Indiana. And so, okay. I'm, mm -hmm. and how long have you been selling on eBay? I have been selling on eBay on and off because I work full time. So on and off for at least 10 to 15 years at a minimum. Yeah, I got in on eBay when it was all opens. And you auctioned everything off. And I, I remember thinking, and now I think about your super size um, thread. And I think, oh my, I used to remember saying, all I care is if I could just make $9.99. And <laughs> that was like the number for me. I want everything to be $9.99. <laughs> 
Wow. Now I'd like every a hundred, you know, right. $99. <laughs> So, um, yeah, you said you work a regular full-time job and that surprised me because of the dollar amounts of things you sell. I thought you were full-time eBay. Oh, I wish. Um, no, what I'm trying to do, I work full-time. Uh, I'm a regional director of marketing for an assisted living organization. Mm -hmm. uh, and I travel about 80% of the time. So if I can do this with traveling, anybody can do this. Um, so I go and when I'm in the other towns, I go shopping, I shop. And then what I do is on Saturdays, I list everything. Mm -hmm. So for me, what I'm trying to do is set myself up, um, so that when I do retire, um, and I'm planning on retiring probably about 70, but realistically more at 66 and 10 months uh -huh. uh, and setting myself up so I can do it full time. I will be doing it full time then right now. I like the insurance. Mm -hmm. Um, Job. So there's, it's one of those things where I, I love selling on eBay. It gives me a thrill. It helps pay for so many things that I wouldn't be able to afford to do without it. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I, you know, the kids get great Christmases because of it. Mm -hmm. and and so yeah, it's one, it's just one of those things that I work full time, but I also love to eBay too. Well, you're probably like millions of people that are heading towards retirement, they want something set up that's income producing and fun. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got to be both. <laughs> and you, you want that, you know, groundwork laid and ready so that when you do officially retire, you just transition seamlessly to eBay. Absolutely. And that, that's the entire plan. Um, I would love to be able to travel down across the United States and just hit up every store that I want to, every garage sale that I want to, um, and be able to pick them up and go back home and list them. So, so is your travel area like local or is it hundreds of miles out? It, it depends on the day. I can travel as much as six hours in a day in a car. Wow. Um, yeah. So, but, but that's where you know, it's how you manage your time. You have to think about, I get up probably at five o'clock and by 5.30, I've had coffee and I'm listing on eBay. I, I don't list, I list, I try to list daily because I do see that the algorithm, if, you, if you're not listing daily, you don't have as many sales. Mm -hmm. I tested that. There's all kinds of little test things that I do. Uh -huh. Good. Um, yeah, but, um, you know, I list two or three things. My goal in my brain is I want to list five, but it's how many photographs that I take. Mm -hmm. So on the weekends, I list more. Yeah, definitely. How many and items do you have in your store? Currently, I think there's 530-ish, mm -hmm. you know, depending on, on the time. I'm pushing towards what I'd like to have is about 1,500. Mm -hmm. um, and that's hard to do, though. That is not as easy as it sounds. So, and then all of a sudden I'll be there. I know I will. I have do, faith. Do you find like, oh, you're approaching 600 and then you sell a whole bunch of stuff and then you're back down to, you know, 550. And so it's like you're, you're a monkey trying to climb out of a well. You, you keep slipping back, mm -hmm. but that's not a bad thing because you're selling stuff and making money. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I mean, I sold stuff that is two years old in my store. So I only opened a store after looking on Facebook and following you and watching your YouTube videos, I, I watched quite a few of them. Um, and that's, well, thank you. Are you kidding me? I learned, I really learned a lot. And that's not, you know, that's an absolute hundred percent truth. Um, you're one of the few uh, YouTubers that I actually follow. So I, and I enjoy, I can't wait. Every time one comes out, I'm like, oh my God, am I going to be in it? Who's going to be, is Sarah going to be in it? <laughs> Okay, well, you know, sometimes I think the, uh, the Julie Gambino show because you have so many things. <laughs> well, I, I like, you know, I, I'm, I, my, my mom was very poor. We were poor growing up. And so she had to figure out like, how are we going to make money? And, or how is she going to make money? She had five kids and was a single mom. So, I mean, you just get really creative. And so I, I can tell you, I've been going to the Goodwill since I was probably 12 years old, but, you know, <laughs> so it has changed quite a bit since then, mm -hmm. um, but it's still a great place to find good deals. Even, even now I hear a lot of people complaining 
but you just have to look for the deal and, and know that sometimes they mark things up because they know that they're going to be having a 50% off sale or a senior sale or 40% off sale, whatever it happens to be. Mm-hmm. But there's still good things to be found. Definitely. Well, I didn't even know there was Goodwill stores until I got divorced and started, you know, made this friend at work that got all her clothes there. And she was like a very, you know, um, hip you know, edgy kind of dresser, you know, she always looks so put together and, you know, yeah. like Rhoda on uh, Mary Tyler Moore, like she was like that, you know, mm-hmm. kind of wild, but it all worked. And I was like, oh, where do you get your clothes? She's like Goodwill store. And I didn't even know what that was. And that was 2003. Um, oh my gosh. Like we, we, uh, growing up, we always donated stuff to Goodwill. Like there was drop-offs, but I'd, I'd never seen a store. And I was like, wow, this is, this is a whole new world way to get not just things to sell, but for your, for anything, you know, (laughs) do you know, I don't actually know how you got started. And to be honest with you, I don't think I've ever seen a video. Okay. Well, just real quick. Um, I went through a divorce and lost my job in the same month and my my kids were six and eight and, um, I was going to have a garage sale and my neighbor was like, oh, you should sell your stuff on eBay. And I was like, what is that? And she, she told me and um, she let me borrow her digital camera that had the little memory card in it. So it take, mm-hmm. I didn't have a way to, I mean, I had like a regular camera, but not a digital one. So sure. you know, I, I listed a few things. And the first thing I sold was my son's Dale Earnhardt toddler car seat. Oh, it sold for okay. $80. And I was like, what? you know, and I just started selling things around the house. And then, um, I actually had a job interview at a bank and I went to the Goodwill store to buy the appropriate clothing and saw all these clothes new with tags and just the, the rep, you know, it was just like an epiphany. Like I could just buy this stuff and resell it, you know, and you know, it's, it's not a novel idea, but it was for me. <laughs> oh, of course. Um, so I spent a hundred dollars on clothes, new with tags and didn't even go to that job interview and just decided to do eBay on purpose. And, you know, after a while, I, um, people started asking me how to do it. And, you know, they saw that I was successful with it. You know, friends would come to my house and see all my inventory and, um, you know, they wanted to know how. So I started a blog and eBooks and it was all because people were asking me, I wasn't just like, volunteering the information I was just trying to help them because I couldn't be at every goodwill store in Atlanta every single day getting every single thing right you know so why not tell this to other people who could do the thing so that's it in a nutshell (laughs) isn't that crazy how we all get started let's hear how you got started um I used to, I work in senior housing, right? So I, I think I told you that I, I work as a regional marketing director and I work, I used to work, I, I now work and I, it's, it's such a fulfilling job because I get to work with people who, um, I work with Medicaid clientele okay. and so we're able to assist people who wouldn't normally have, uh, have be able to afford assisted living. Mm-hmm. I think the average across the United States is probably six thousand dollars for an assisted living facility, and I can bring you in on Medicaid. A month? Um, yeah, yeah, that's the average. Yeah, that's, that's a national average. Yeah, it's crazy. But um, in high-end senior housing, kids come in and they take what they want, and everything else goes into the dumpster. And so, if you look on my, if you actually looked in my store on eBay. I always put on every posting, I put a little blurb about how I'm a proud dumpster diver because I have no problem jumping in that dumpster to get things out. Mm -hmm. And I think actually we were talking earlier about um, high-end, you know, large dollar sales. My, Mm -hmm. one of my very first was I went to um, a, I went in the dumpster to get out this 17th century painting that had a big hole in it. It was of this little girl and it's on worth point, which is really interesting because I looked it up. <laughs> but, oh, wow. Um, it, yeah, it was of this little girl um, and she was really just, I mean, she was beautiful. I mean, you know, she had blue eyes and the whole hair was going great. And I put her up for auction on eBay and I thought, well, who knows what I'm going to get? And it was well over a thousand dollars with a hole in her. 
And, and so that was like, what a rush. I am so into this. Um, <laughs> that, that was, that was like, okay, I can do this. Uh, and it's easy, you know, uh, and especially now with the technology we have now, everything, all the photographs I take with my phone, everything else I do on my computer, just because I don't, I'm not a phone person. So I know I'm not either. I just like a big screen. Like I'm flying an airplane, you know, like <laughs> <all> in front <laughs> of me. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what other things have you pulled out of the dumpsters? Oh, oh, gold chains that I pulled out a broken gold chain and sold that for $200 in like less than 10 minutes. Oh my um, gosh. yeah, definitely. So um, let's see what else was there uh, just out of dumpster. I mean, there's been uh, sterling silver repose bowls, um, books. I mean, there's just everything you can possibly think of. Oh, what really kills me. And I didn't pull all of these out was um, photographs of, and had I known now how, how much of those were collectible, I probably would have, uh, photographs of people who served in the military. Okay. Um, and uh, and when they're overseas and all of the uh, all of the pictures from that, mm -hmm. I wish I had taken more of that stuff. But um, you know, you can find things anywhere. You know, I frequently go to estate sales. I think you see that all the time. I, uh -huh. In my area, hello, it doesn't get better than this. They have the estate sale on Thursday, or and sometimes on Thursday, Fridays uh -huh. and Saturdays, and Sundays the estate runner. He does fill a bag for $10 because he does the clear up. He doesn't want to mess right, with it. Right. So I go, and as you can clearly see, there is always good stuff left over mm -hmm. that nobody else wanted. And I'm, I'll fill a bag for $10. I'll fill 10 bags for $10 a piece. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's funny. People go to estate sales sometimes just looking for one specific type of item, you know, and yes. If there's no um, sterling silver or, you know, the glassware or, um, you know, very specific guns, very specific things, they just leave. That's just, that's just their thing that they want, you know, golf clubs or sporting goods or whatever. And, and they don't look at everything like us scavengers do. Um, <laughs> when I go to a estate sale, I don't even go on the first day. I mean, I just wait for all those people to get on through and um mm -hmm. it's like the challenge of the leftovers <laughs> you know what no it is it really <laughs> is it's like what can i find that i can make money on and some right. of my sales have been from things that i got for free <laughs> so yeah 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 oh and you were um, talking about books i remember i pulled a frank lloyd wright's book out of the trash somewhere along the way and it mm -hmm. may have been at a, at a crappy little thrift store that was just, you know, purging some stuff and was sure. outside. And I saw, you know, Frank Lloyd Wright and I was like, oh, this might be worth something. I just took it home and I sold it for like a hundred dollars. Yeah. You know, it's just, nobody knows everything. And nope. it's just, and it all changes all the time. Like there's things out there now that people want that nobody wanted two years ago. And all of a sudden they want them again, you know? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like telephones. Have you heard the latest craze? People are getting house phones again. And so, no. yeah, I can see why back. because it's yeah. so expensive to have all this cell phone stuff. Yeah. 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 So I was, I was um, watching something and they were like, Oh yeah, I just got this phone and they were, they had it all hooked up and I'm like, okay, here we go. And those uh, younger people, millennials and uh, the next generation after that, I can't remember, I think it's Gen think X. It's Gen Z. Gen Z, yeah, they're into it. My granddaughter is 13 and she's into anything 1980s. She's there, <laughs> so. Well, I wonder if house phones came back during COVID because everyone was at home. <laughs> oh, you know what? That's really a good point. Like, I, don't need this, I don't need this mobile phone. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I know. I remember asking my grant, we were in a, we were in a resale shop and I didn't purchase it because it was white, but, um, there was a cell phone and not a cell phone, a uh, landline phone. Uh -huh. And I asked him what this, what it was, and he had zero clue. And I, I honestly thought he, he knew, and he was just joking. And he's like, no, Graham, I really don't <laughs> know what that is. Oh, they didn't even know what it was. Was it like a, a rotary phone? Um, yes, it was, it was just a rotary phone and it was, 
uh, it was a princess style, but it was a rotary. Doesn't that make you feel so old? Hey, I still remember. Yeah, yes and no. But I still remember when you had party lines. I remember sitting in in my bedroom and and listening into the <laughs> neighbors on a party yeah. line. Yeah. When we moved to the country in 1994, we moved to my ex-husband's family farm, like nobody had lived on it in a long time. And that community out in the middle of nowhere, um, they still had party lines and, mm -hmm. and they had just gotten push button phones. Like, you know, wow. we came from the city where we had, you know, the house phone that was all cordless and you had like, yeah. you know, six of them and, um, and it was just, it was literally like walking back in time to like the Waltons, you know, and like they were 25 years behind everything. But um, I always wanted one of those princess phones, like a pink or a blue one. <laughs> yeah, didn't we all? For yeah. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have, we had the kind that hung on the wall and it had this super long extension cord and I would go into the bathroom <laughs> and shut the door and lock it because that's the only place you could have a personal conversation. Yeah, actually my mom, we had four teenagers at one time and my mom made a, a closet and we, we put a little love seat in there. We made it like a little phone room and you would just stretch the cord and shut the door and go in there and have your call in the phone booth. <laughs> Oh, that's fabulous. Did you say 14 or we had four? four teenagers? Oh. oh, I thought you said 14. No. Like, you kidding. <laughs> Not 14. No, four. No, four. <laughs> yeah, there were five kids in my family. So I know all about that. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. to my mom, it seemed like 14 kids. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. So oh you, um, so you were full time at your regular job yes. and then like how many hours a week do you figure you work on ebay i honestly i'm going to say maybe 12 at most really a lot yeah well that's almost I, 50 hours a month so that's that's a lot yeah and i i probably bring in about a thousand a month Mm -hmm. so you know sometimes more sometimes less I'm looking forward to fourth quarter I'm anticipating hopefully that it really goes big I know in December of last year uh, it was big for me and I was like, mm -hmm. yes and then it went here <laughs> after February yeah, it's so up and down and and that's just it's everybody mm -hmm. I got my sister um, Kim involved recently uh, within the past year and she's out in Ohio and she goes to um, like little town auctions where you actually you're auctioning steer, you're auctioning items. They buy like little boxes of stuff anyways, right. but she, she'll list it and forgets it. She doesn't, when it comes in, it comes in. When it doesn't, it doesn't. She doesn't list every day and that works for her and she still sells. So, mm -hmm. and she sells high dollar amount items majorly. So. Mm -hmm. Well, anything over a hundred, I consider high dollars. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, definitely. Do you yeah. ever do any tweaking of listings or you just kind of let it go? And when it sells, it sells. I let it go. When it sells, it sells. Yeah. I do. Um, I tried doing the tweaking. I saw absolutely no, no, no difference. I tried doing the listing, unlisting and relisting. And personally, I didn't find that it helped it at all. The, I, the, the very same item still didn't sell. Mm -hmm. So I don't that has anything to do with it. I think it's, you know, it's demand. What's in demand at that particular moment? What do I have that somebody else wants? I firmly believe that you can sell anything. Like some of the things I sell, I can't even <laughs> believe that I sold them. And yeah. yet I made somebody happy. <laughs> and I get wonderful notes from people. That's probably one of my favorite things is when you get yeah. an email from someone saying, hey, I absolutely adore this. You have no idea of what XYZ memories it brings back for me. Um, and if you ever have any more, let me know. <laughs> yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. Or, you know, our house burned down and we replaced, trying to replace what we had and, um, you know, all those kind of things that happen. So um, there is a lot of concern about like the large number of Chinese sellers coming to eBay, but what are they selling? You know? I, I don't know. I, I tell you, when I'm purchasing on eBay, I filter out if it's not in the United States. I, I, I only want to purchase 
people. Yeah, I know that that sounds bad, doesn't it? No, but, it doesn't. I want to support what's already in our country. I mean, yeah. the it takes fewer resources. You know, you don't have to pay. It have it doesn't take fuel to well, ship it over here and all that. Yeah. It's already here. <laughs> but um, the question about you know the Chinese sellers, what are they selling? They're not selling vintage stuff. No, they no, are. You know, they're not. They're selling like a gazillion, you know, iPhone cases and, you know, Roku's and all these things that there's so much competition on, but sure. you know, if you like what I sell today, I sold a, a little teddy bear, vintage teddy bear, had a little bell in it, like a baby plush, 50 bucks. They paid 50 bucks for it. Isn't and that crazy? It had like, like a 1979 tag on it. And, um, mm -hmm. I paid a dollar 50 cents for it because it was on half price day. And, you know, like Chinese sellers aren't selling that, you know, they're not selling these beautiful vintage uh, table linens and, you know, crocheted Afghans and all these vintage things that people want for home decor and like, you know, stuff you're finding in the dumpster that's World War II photos. And, um, I don't, you know, if, if you position yourself correctly and have a strategy of what you're selling, you don't have to worry about competitors. Just have those unique items. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's just it's items that nostalgic items, right? Mm -hmm. So we we always want to. I whatever I sell, I want it to bring an emotion. I know that sounds silly, but it's true. I want it to, to for someone to love it. Now. I do sell things that are more modern, but someday that'll bring an emotion for somebody else in that age bracket. Yeah, um, I mean, if you're if you find some kind of IKEA thing new in the package, like some weird shelf bracket, uh, yeah, I'm picking that up. But yeah, um, yeah, but it's for the most part that's emotion drives spending. Yes, like if yeah, you I think about that. what you've spent money on, but you know we all have choices, and it's like we pick what's the most meaningful thing to us or what's the most comfortable or what's going to bring you the most uh, pleasure in your life. And, and it's, it's different for everybody, but those nostalgic items are right on top. There it's like, um, blow molds. I mean, really, when you look at a blow mold, you could go out to the store and buy a brand new one. And yet people buy the, the vintage ones because it brings back a memory. Have you so. found any of those? I did. I recently did. I actually, um, you know, I, I don't post on my own personal Facebook page the things that I'm selling because it's supposed to be about seeing family and friends. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my family and my friends all know that I sell on eBay. My boss has told me historically that she wants me to teach her how to do it because she's got several things that she'd like to, to sell. But um, I, I had a friend call me and say, hey, you know, my dad's moving to my brother's house. Would you like to come and see um, if there's anything you want, it's free. Just come and pick it up. And two of the things that I picked up were blow molds. I mean, I have this big Santa Claus head that I still haven't listed because I'm looking for the right box. I mean, it's big. So I have to have the right box for it. Uh -huh. And on eBay, they typically sell around the 225 mark. So hello, she just gave me like free money. And I also have a, another one that's a stand-up Santa Claus that's mm -hmm. that is around the $50 mark. But your friends, if you tell them that you sell on eBay, they'll call you for things like that too. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I got all kind of neighbors trying to give me stuff. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> uh, I'm wary about saying yes, because then you don't know how much more is going to follow, you know? <laughs> Oh, I, I mean, she just said, come and get it. And then, you oh, know, come okay. and pick. I, I, like, I literally went through his house and picked out what I want. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. that's it. I would, you know, boxes of stuff. Otherwise I could be, I, I, I could, I have hoarding tendencies. I'm, I'm truthful. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm trying to keep away from that. Luckily, Everybody I does this business and has a little bit of hoarding because, you know, there are some things you just can't pass by. Yeah. You know, if it's yes. like an, an estate, like the state sale leftovers, like here, you can have those four boxes of stuff for $10. And it's like, you're not going to leave that behind. You know, oh, I did that recently. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, yeah. Offered, they were all um, plates, you know, those, what are they, what do they call those plates for collector's plates? Okay. And they said, you can have that entire box for a dollar. And I'm like, you can keep that for, <laughs> I'll pay you a dollar to keep it. Right. <laughs> I, I, do not, I have locked with, you know, with collector's plates. I just don't. 
Yeah, I don't really, some of them can be worth money, but it's, it's, they're not one of those go-to items for me, you know, because no. yeah. it's like uh, awkward to store them. And I don't know. I just, everybody knows I don't like breakables. I just. <laughs> oh, I sell a lot of breakables, but you know, I'm, I'm fortunate enough that I have a full size basement. It's not finished. And so I've been um, putting wire shelves up down there and then just putting everything on the wire shelves and that works. Yeah. So yeah. do you do much clothing? I'm scared. I keep trying to, <laughs> and Sarah does it. I mean, she's killing it with the clothing. Like, she okay. Just... So listeners, Sarah is Julie's daughter who is yes. also in the group. Um, yes. I don't know if you want to say her last name or not, but she posts. Oh yeah. It's Sarah Pyatt. She would have no problem. I might yeah. have to do an interview with her next. Um, Cause yes. she posts some great stuff. <laughs> yes, she does. But she's been shopping in the bins lately and she's um, posting. I mean, she's taking photographs of that. I just, for some reason, I, I, I feel like if I put a wrong measurement or I do anything, it'll be coming back at me. And I prefer things that don't come back <laughs> at me. Yeah. I mean, Clothing, that is, that's considered higher return than other things, mm -hmm. but you know, I sell probably now I've got it down to about 60% is my, is clothing. And I just, I don't get that many returns. And if you do, it's, it's usually for fit and they pay for the return. You just relist it and it's a couple of dollars more. You just put a yeah. little higher price on it, but, um, and they're usually disappointed because like I saw this beautiful Johnny was embroidered top. It was just beautiful. And the lady got it. And she's like, I'm so sad. This doesn't fit. I really wanted this to fit, but I'm going to have to return it. I'm so sorry. So they're just as disappointed as you are. You know, nobody wants to order something and have it arrive and not fit. Oh, you know? no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and, and most people are, are too lazy to even send it back. You know, a lot of probably 75% of the return requests I get, they never ship it back. They, it times out on them and it, after 30 days, it's too late. So they just forget about it. So yeah. anyway, but like, I, I, bet you, shoes, so. I thought you had done like funky coats and dresses and shoes and, you know, a few things like that. No. Okay. Um, oh my God. I sold so many things. I don't remember doing that. <laughs> well, and there's enough. a lot of information on that hundred dollar thread. So sometimes it runs together. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think, yeah, I, I definitely haven't sold any clothing over a hundred dollars for sure. So that probably wasn't me. Um, I do, however, have a couple of bins and a, maybe a, maybe a clothing rack full of clothes that I keep saying, I'm going to list this someday. Um, I need to get a dress form though, I think, because I have a lot of dresses, especially like my work dresses. So, you know, as you get older, maybe you're not as small as you used to be. Of course not. <laughs> and so I should probably get rid of them. And even if I got $10 a piece, I'd probably be happy because, you know, it's more than I, I, okay. I get while they're sitting in my closet. So um, you can find good deals on those on Facebook Marketplace. Like yeah, I've, been, I've been watching. Okay. eBay sellers going out of business. I get this question all the time. And I have like even a script I answer with. It's like, I don't want to do eBay anymore, or, you know, they're moving or they just um, lost their spouse and they just, they just don't want to do that. Life is hard. They don't want to do it anymore. Um, how do I get rid of my inventory? What do I do? And usually the answer is sell it locally as a going out of business thing, you know, and so um, you'll see people selling their mannequin, their racks, their storage stuff, you know, all of it, um, either like as a walkthrough, just come over and pick out what you want or as a bulk thing. Yeah, I see a lot of people, well, not a lot. I've seen a couple of people post on different Facebook groups that they're looking to get out of, of selling on eBay. And that makes, that kind of makes me sad because I think there's such great opportunities in it. Even if it's just, you know, like for me, like it's my, my side hustle, right? It's mm -hmm. not my main job, but I make a good income from it. And then someday it will be my permanent job. So I hope it's around forever. Um, I realize there's other platforms, but you know. Well, what I see is as many new people coming as people leaving. 
And um, like I have a yeah. friend whose husband had a stroke, you know, and they're in their 60s and she's taking care of him now. And she just, she was like, I just don't have time. I love doing it. And, um, you know, he's not ready for round the clock care, you know, stuff. she's going to have to be the caregiver. Mm -hmm. And she's just like, I don't have time. And I, all this stuff sitting here. And she even gave me like 200 things that were very nice, I, you know, designer items that she had handpicked. And so, um, you know, a lot of times people have to leave they don't want to, it's just their life is, they're needed other places. <laughs> so, yeah, no. I mean, it, life is, it's crazy. You know, you get busy sometimes. Yeah. 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 So but, how did you live? Did you have, let's ask this question. Did you have a money pile with those 200 items or did you list them right away? I, I, call my, I don't like to call it a death pile because I think that's a very negative connotation. Yeah. yeah I like yeah. to call it my little money pile. And sometimes on occasion, you'll see, hear me say, I went down to my basement and I found something that may be 20 years old. <laughs> And so it's free. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I split it with my daughter. <laughs> oh, nice. So we both got, because I was like, um, so that would be like a hundred things for each of us. And, you know, it's free. And because um, there's no way I, I could have gotten on top of that. No. It would take me forever. So, um, yeah, so we, we split it and that worked out. So you know how it is having a daughter. You share everything. <laughs> oh, we do. Yes, we do. We share lots of things. I have, you know, my other daughter actually does. Um, she doesn't sell on eBay, um, but she flips on Marketplace. So she she likes to buy mid-century furniture low. Mm -hmm. She kind of stores them and then flips them for a profit. So nice. she specializes in that. I have my whole, whole little army of side hustlers <laughs> working. Yeah, everybody does different things. Um, mm -hmm. I just, I did, I did Facebook marketplace kind of here and there. I just, the people don't show up where I'm at and it's just, it's a time waster. It's kind of aggravating. Mm -hmm. so, um, well, I can tell you, she doesn't, she lives in the inner city of Chicago. And mm -hmm. if somebody says, I'll meet you at two hours from now. And somebody calls her and says, I'm coming right over. She doesn't care if she confirmed two hours from now. She's selling to the person who's coming yeah, whoever first. Whoever gets but that money in my hand first is the winner. Yep. <laughs> and then she will text the person two hours from now and say, hey, I've already sold. Because yeah. you can't wait for the next person. Right. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, maybe so. everything's just slower here in the South. <laughs> It could be, maybe not. Um, I think she does Porsche pickups too. Like she'll put yeah. it on the porch, they leave it the money in an envelope. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good. So what is your favorite category to sell in? Oh, um, Christmas. Oh my God, 100% Christmas. Yeah, anything Christmas. Christmas sells all year round for me. I don't care what month it is. It is, it can be January and it's selling. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, the whole thing. Every I look for ornaments. I mean, it's it's crazy how underrated ornaments are. Like, I'll go to an estate sale and they'll say, oh, you want Christmas? And I'm like, yeah, where's your Christmas stuff? And they're like, there, take it off for, you know, five bucks because we want it gone. Because they don't and know. Yeah. No, it's like a little money pile all on its own. Um, People collect all different kinds of ornaments. Of course, I love the shiny brights. I love the Christopher Radcos. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I also like Krebs. Krebs is a consister, consistent, I hope I'm saying that right, K-R-E-B-S. I That's guess, I've never heard of that. Yeah, they, okay. they do blown glass. Um, I don't remember what country they're from, but, um, and it doesn't really look like anything special, but I can list those and they'll go, so. So what are some of the, um memorable Christmas sales you've had. Um, Since this uh, podcast is going to come out in October, that's perfect timing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I don't, let's see. Remember, I mean, I've sold so much Christmas stuff. It's crazy. I sold um, three boxes of Shiny Bright for, I think it was like, it was probably around the $80 mark. Mm -hmm. um, they were uh, hand painted, of course, with the little skiers on them and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I sold a Santa Claus head for somewhere in the rain. I mean, because these are, you know, like a Santa Claus head. It was just a little head, um, regular size ornament. And I sold that for like $60. Um, I recently, I just sold this past week, um, Blue Sky Clayworks. Have you heard of them? 
Uh, they make like little houses with, with candles, like right. candles okay. that they kind of glow. I just sold, and it's, um, I just sold a uh, snowman <laughs> and, and his, his base is a snowflake. So his, he's there with a Christmas tree and he's, and, and that went for 2750 mm -hmm. for best offer. And I paid $3. I think that's a pretty good return. So, wow. yeah. And ornaments are easy to, you know, they're easy to package. They're easy to mm -hmm. ship. Um, they're light. So, you know, shipping costs are not as expensive. You have to think about those things. I, yeah, I, wanted, absolutely. I wanted to pick up a statue the other day. It was a, a statue of, um, it's Easter Island, that mm -hmm. totem kind of thing. Yeah. That thing must have weighed 10 pounds. And I'm like, I am not shipping that. <laughs> so that was yeah. one of those things I passed on because it was so heavy. It oh, you know what I found the other day, and I had seen this on the $100 thread, was mm -hmm. one of those wooden bins for potatoes and onions. Yes. It's like three feet tall. And yep. of course, down here, it said taters, you know, <laughs> and um, I saw it. It was like $8, and I picked it up, and I'm like, oh, no, this is, I don't want to deal with this. You know, it's so, it was so heavy, mm -hmm. and um, I thought... Yeah, I guess I'm getting old. I just don't want to deal with that. It was too, it was really big and, you know, heavy wood. It was made very well. And um, it probably sold the same day to somebody else right. that was willing to do that, but that's okay. Um, I found a three foot uh, Ikea plush shark the other day for three to, uh, $3 and mm -hmm. sold it for uh, 50 in just a few hours. Isn't that crazy? And I was like, yeah. it, didn't, it didn't even weigh two pounds. And I was like, yeah, this is more my speed. Put that sucker in a space bag and suck it down and put it in a box and ready to go. And I didn't even know Ikea made plush. I didn't either. I was actually just thinking that. Do they, where, I'm thinking, I, I don't go into Ikea that often. I don't, I've I, never been in one. I just know their stuff. Oh, gosh. I can speak in front of a room of 200 people, but put me in a setting like Ikea, it is overwhelming with too much stimulus. Yeah, we and have them here. I just have never been. Um, <laughs> I've, I've heard, we had one open like in Buckhead, which is near Atlanta on the day after Thanksgiving one year. And my kids went with their dad and just, you would have thought, you know, it was a torture chamber. It was just like, God, there were so many people and all the stuff in there and, you know, waiting an hour in line to get the meatballs and all this kind of stuff. And, and I was like, well, maybe I'll just stick to Goodwill. <laughs> <laughs> Their Swedish meatballs though are to die for. Sorry. Yeah, I, <laughs> I need to experience that at some point, but um, probably not in downtown Atlanta. I'll pick a different location. So, no, yeah, maybe but, not. Yeah. I didn't know they made plush. So I'm like, you know, every time, every single time I go shopping, I, I learn multiple new things. And it's just, sometimes I go just so I'll have things that I can tell other people, you know? <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, I just, I have to, uh, when I'm looking at things, I actually have to think about, am I really going to, do I really want to sell that? Is it going to bring me joy to list it and have to photograph it and stuff because and that's an easy way to pass right as a tip um if you don't like it and you don't like looking at it it's probably not your thing <laughs> so um, yeah I think if this was you know in my pile of stuff to list would I pull this out first because I'm so excited about it no right. I would not yeah. cookie jars I mean I know they make money I just they don't turn me on I just all I can think about is they're going to break and um you know, yeah, I don't, yeah, that, that shipping of those things. Oh my gosh. I have the most beautiful Christopher Radco tea light. And I have had that thing listed for over two years. I have tried listing and unlisting everything and I cannot sell that thing. And it is gorgeous. And so it can sit there as long as it wants to, because I like the way it looks. So, and I, well, I mean, Christmas, <laughs> there's just some things you just don't want to give up on. Like when I'm going, I kind of go through my stuff every six months and like, what do I think about this? It's, you know, has it had any offers? Do I really want to keep this? And, um, and so if the answer is no, I get rid of it, but there are some things, you know, a lot of things that, yes, I would definitely buy this again today. Someone's going to want this, you know, yes. and I just, I hang on to it. If it's, if it's 
fits that category. But, you know, like we said, things change and sometimes the, um, you know, supply catches up with demand uh -huh. and it's just not worth as much anymore or nobody wants that home decor theme anymore. Like the, a lot of the home decor stuff changes, you know? Yes, like it does. I the, agree. The farmhouse chic thing is, you know, that's been around a while and now every age family is getting into the mid-century modern. And so that's, that's hotter now than it was. And it's so, you know, it just kind of, it kind of shifts around. So now I, I heard of something called cottage core and I actually yeah. meant to research, research that because I'm trying to figure out how is that different from French country or from farmhouse? It's, it's like an earthy, um, like almost a fairy tale kind of, think Beatrix Potter sitting around oh. with her, all her animal friends in her cottage with, it, it's like a naturalist thing with, it's more earthy and, um, you know, with the printed, it, it's almost like um, glamorizing country living. Like you see all these women in these long printed um, prairie dresses, you know, with the big hats doing their gardening, like nobody's going to garden like that. It's just for the, for the photo ops and stuff and the, the Instagram, but it's, it's, it's a uh, glamorizing like gardening and um, naturalist earthy stuff. Mm -hmm. I did a segment on that for my premium library explaining what it is because <laughs> people were like, what is this? Is, is it fairy tales? Is it French country? Um, what is it? So it's like a combination of all those things. So, you know, that's something that I haven't really looked into uh, because I mean, really it's just a shortage of time, which is your premium library. Are you able to like, if there was a topic in there, are you able to just purchase like the listening pleasure of that particular topic? Oh, well, the way it works is it's $20 a month. You have access to everything. Mm -hmm. So it, it's kind of like um, Netflix where you just pay the one fee and mm -hmm. I add new stuff every week. So now there's like 430 videos. So you can just pick what you want. And it, it's supposed to be self-guided. Like I want to learn about, you know, selling um, knives and cutlery and go take that class. Or, you know, I want to learn about um, selling eyeglasses. And it's, it's kind of like when I learn about something, I'll study it for six months or so, and then I'll make a class or so everyone else can learn about it too. Right. So, so um, yeah, it is a time investment. I mean, it's, it's listening and watching the videos and that kind of thing. So you're busy. You already have two jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I do. And I have kids and uh, right now I'm doing a house flip too. So I'm oh my gosh, really the one yeah. you're living in or a different one? No, no, not the one I'm living in. Oh, so good. luckily, no, it's not. It's a, it's a couple towns over, but yeah. um, it just takes up, you know, all, all those things, you know, take up a lot of time. But that's the point I think that I really like to get across today is that, you know, okay, so I don't have a lot of time to do everything, but I still have some time. And, uh, you know, people who say, I, I just don't have the time, you make the time. For something that you really care about, you're going to make that time. Yeah, I find that an interesting statement too. They're like, oh, I don't have time. But you have time to watch TV for three hours every night. So mm -hmm. see, I just, I feel like, Oh, I could use that time to make money. <laughs> yeah, well, I have making TV money playing in the background. I do have the TV playing in the background. But I mean, sure. you're kind of like it's on, and you're half watching it, and you're listening, yeah. and and yeah. um, you know, I just the, you know, the my items I purchased for sale, like that I haven't listed yet. Um, you know, they just call me until, you know, it's just like a chocolate cake sitting there on the counter. Come get me, you know. <laughs> It's like, if that was listed, it could sell in five minutes and you could have the money from that. And mm -hmm. sometimes that happens, you know, it's, sometimes it does. It, it's almost like gambling because, um, you know, the, you weigh the odds of the outcome mm -hmm. weigh, you know, you think about how much you want to invest and it's mm -hmm. a very small investment for, especially if you're getting stuff out of dumpsters. Um, no one does. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> um, and it, it is just like, you know, how it's the not knowing how it's going to turn out that keeps me going. It's, you know, there's a thrill of the hunt. What am I going to find today? And then there's yes. how much is this going to sell for and when? And, you know, 
just any second you could pick up your phone and there you go. Um, mm -hmm. I took a little trip this past weekend with my son. We went up to the mountains for a couple of days just to get away. And um, my phone was just blowing up with sales. And I had like, I had a $400 day on Saturday. And that's a lot oh, of yours. And I was like, this is the universe telling me you can put this down and go have a life. You know, it's okay. Um, right. But, you know, sometimes you go two days with nothing and then it's, it comes back. And I mean, I'm sure that happens to you with 500 items. It, it does. Um, and I, I can tell you, I sometimes talk to my phone and go, eBay, I need a sale. And then uh -huh. I, I go whiny and cry. And um, <laughs> sometimes that works and sometimes that doesn't work. But, yeah. I mean, but it always comes back. Yeah, it always comes back. I don't think I've ever gone. I think the longest I've ever gone um, without a sale is maybe four days. And then uh -huh. there probably was just a baby sale in there and I don't count it. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I usually once a week have a day with no sales. And Do you? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't have thousands of items. I have about 450. And I'm, yeah, I'm, that's crazy I'm getting more, but I'm, mm -hmm. I want them to be the small items that don't take up much room. So, you know, I'm, I'm very methodical in picking what I'm selling. Like that giant wooden potato box was not it, you know? <laughs> so, no. um, because those things are also faster to ship when they're small, they're right. faster and easier. And so, um, you can store a lot more items when, you know, like eyeglasses, you can fit a whole lot more of those in a bin than you can coats. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. I just, I saw, I just talked about eyeglasses. That was one of my good flips. So I went to an estate sale mm -hmm. and uh, I was in a $10 fill bag and there were the, I still don't know what they are. There were these um, American optic eyeglasses that had uh, wire mesh by the nostrils, by, you know, like in there. And those things sold both pairs. There were two pairs. Each one of them sold for eight, in the range of $80 a piece. And that was crazy to me. I was like, what? <laughs> Eyeglasses, I look for those now. <laughs> now, were they, they were vintage? Oh yeah, they were, they were definitely vintage. They were probably well, from the 60s. Yeah. Some of the vintage ones do actually have gold in them. Oh. And you can tell by the, that's what I teach in my course. Like oh, see, and I didn't watch it. No, <laughs> well, I, I learned it too because I didn't know. Um, I missed and, out, and that's the way I am when I learn something valuable. I'm like, I gotta tell everybody because I wonder how many other people don't know this. Um, yeah. But the numbers on the arms of the eyeglasses, they all mean something. So oh. sometimes it'll it'll have a a code or a number that means it has gold in it. Oh, interesting. And, I think like you, maybe other sellers don't know that, but the people buying them do, and yep. they may be buying them just to take them to the We Buy Gold places, or mm -hmm. they have another place to sell them to. I don't know, but- um, I was I, thinking yeah. that maybe they were a movie prop. That was in my brain, even yeah. though I've never- oh, absolutely. I, okay, so two things I've never had happen to me. I have been in eBay's global shipping program forever. I have never sold overseas. Really? Is that not weird? Yeah, I've never had to ship to eBay's global shipping. Oh and I have, what was the other thing? Oh my God, there it goes. <laughs> um, movie prop. Oh yeah, I have never sold a movie prop. Hello, what is wrong? Well, that you here? know of. You don't that know. I know of. Right, that I know of. I mean, they could have purchased it under their own name. I actually, I, yeah, I have a friend yeah. that, that works at a movie prop place in Atlanta mm -hmm. and not everything gets shipped there. People buy stuff individually and just have it shipped to their home and then they take it in. Mm. So you might, I bet you have, you just didn't know it. Well, I'd like to know. So if anybody watching this, if you purchase from me, let me know. <laughs> well, I sold a golf shirt to the news correspondent, Britt Hume in oh. DC. That was back in the early days when I first started because I sold it and shipped it. And I'm like, Britt Hume, Washington, DC. Like how many of them could there be, you know, this has to yeah. be the guy, you know, and yeah. he just bought it under his own name. And I was like, oh, wow, that's interesting. <laughs> so, it is. Yeah, it, that is. I mean, you just never know. It's fun stuff. What was your most expensive sale that you've ever had on eBay? Um, the autograph book. 
Oh, that one, that was just recent. That was it? last, it was December of 2020. Like what better time yeah. it happened because everything was closed and slow and last year. So um, yeah, um, that autograph book. And I struggled with, do I tear all the pages out or sell it intact? Ooh, but, yeah. um, and I probably should have put it on auction. I just, I was in the process of moving and I was just like, I'm just gonna put it up there and see what happens. So um, it sold immediately. And then the guy who bought it wanted me to lowball the amount on the, uh, cause he was overseas somewhere. And he wanted mm -hmm. me to say it was worth less. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. Cause if it, oh, if no, that'll get if you it gets lost and I have to file a claim, I'm only gonna get this low amount. I'm not doing that. Yeah. So refunded him, started over, sold it again. And just like immediately after I listed it, like within minutes and it went to a guy in uh, London and I looked up his eBay account and he was an autograph broker. And so oh. he, as soon as he got it, he started breaking them out and selling them all individually. And there was like 58 autographs in that book. So, um, you know, there's, there's different ways to do everything. I, I was very happy with that $3 purchase that sold for a thousand dollars in less than a day. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I would be happy with that. Thank you. <laughs> and you said yours was what your highest sale uh, ever? Um, I think the highest sale, well, I will tell you the most interesting. How's that? Because I, I think there was one that was 2000, but I can't remember what it was, but this one, I, I always love it's a, I, came I went to a garage sale and I came home with a dog's head and it was a wooden dog's head and it had glass eyes and it was like um you mounted it was a pound and you mounted the head to the wall oh okay. but it was wood it was not alive it was not a taxidermy and I had that thing sitting on the coffee table and my partner goes could you move that it's creeping me out and uh -huh. I'm like fine 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 I'll list it and this was years ago I listed that and I sold it in less than 15 minutes for $1,500. And what was the item? It was a carved dog's head with glass eyes. Yeah, dog head. 1500 yeah. 1500 in less than 15 minutes. And the guy was, so, he wrote me the most beautiful letter. And he's like, if you have any other items, my wife and I collect um, items like this. And, you know, just let me know. I'm like, no, I, you know, I get random things. I get that a lot. Do you, do you experience that? Oh like, yeah. I'm like, well, customer? when I, if I have a lot of something, like I have a lot of bras, I'm into that yeah. now. And so, you know, they do say, well, if you get this, let me know. But um, no, on those, those random things, I've heard of that before where it's like, Hey, I'll probably never see this again. So you're probably never going to see it again either. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's it's one of those things. I look for them now. I've never seen another one ever, but you never know. Life is very short. You just never know what you're going to come across. And you know, the weirder, the better on eBay. Oh, I saw glass eyes. Oh my God. I saw glass eyes. Some, that was one of my dumpster dives. I saw glass eyes. Um, they threw away, they threw them away. There were four of them. And I sold them for $250 and that was like in the early nineties. So that was a lot of money back then. Oh my gosh. That is crazy. crazy. Yeah. It was, you know, medical, medical supplies. I've sold, um, I remember I sold a, um, some kind of a surgical saw, like a hand saw, like what the military would take your leg off with, or, oh. you, know, you know, a bone saw, that's what it yeah. was, but it was manual. <laughs> oh. Yeah. But I mean, that kind of stuff people like to collect because they like the historic value of it. Mm -hmm. um, I've sold medals in the past, you know, like from World War II. Um, my, I have a military family, so I'm not allowed to sell any, and eBay doesn't let you anymore, but any purple hearts and right. stuff like that. Yeah. I, would, I, I, would, I think I'm on board with that. Yeah, I'm on board with that too. Hello, you know, people work. But, you know, but, but um, I will tell you this. I have found purple hearts in the dumpster and it, that breaks my heart that, so, um, I just, uh, give them to my daughter and she takes them to whoever she takes them to. Uh, so you're saying the person it belonged to, it got thrown away by their family. Yep. Absolutely. 
Because I know there's an organization that helps find the owner of lost Purple Hearts. Like, you know, if you donate your desk and it's in the drawer and you forgot and then somebody finds it, there's some kind of organization that helps get it back to its owner. But oh, that's wonderful. You're yeah. saying the owner was the one who probably mm -hmm. passed away and their family was cleaning out. Yes. Oh, that's hard. Yeah, that's sad. It's hard. It, it's hard. And, um, but you, you know, know, museums are buying a lot of stuff on eBay too, because I heard that a lot, you know, where they'll find a old military uniform or something that would go in a museum of whatever type. And um, the museums are buying things to, mm -hmm. you know, they want to preserve the history. Well, it's very, I have to, we, I have to be very careful nowadays about any, any kind of military items because a lot of it's been prohibited on eBay. Right. So, right. and I'm not an expert in that particular field. It's just, if you, you know, like, hello, if you're in a dumpster and you see it I, and I see that I pick, pick it up. Yeah. Not that I'm in a lot of dumpsters nowadays, but at, you know, back in the day I did. Um, and now I would be very careful about that um, just because I know that it can't be sold on eBay. And, and secondly, because um, then I'm, I'm tasked, well, I would pick it up if I saw it actually, because I feel like I, I would be tasked then with the job of trying to find its home mm -hmm. without, without selling it though. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. So do you find that when you're shopping, when you find something um, special like that, that you'll, you'll typically find more than one at the same location? Do you know what I mean? Okay. Like, yeah. While you're, like, you find that happens on a regular, I find that um, happens on a regular basis. Like the same person donated a bunch of stuff, you know, um, maybe they lost a bunch of weight, maybe mm -hmm. they passed away, but like I'll find Eileen Fisher. That's a great brand to sell. Um, if I find one, I'm like, there's going to be some more. And sometimes there, there are, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a few tops and a jacket and some pants and it was their whole wardrobe. So um, that's what keeps me looking for so long is like, oh, could there be another one like this that got donated at the same time? <laughs> you never know. No, you don't. You just, you just never know what you're going to come across. And that's the fun thing about selling. That's okay. I think we need to wrap it up anyway, because we've been going an hour. Um, <laughs> oh my God. See, you're so much fun. <laughs> I know. Um, like so since your, your battery is dying, um, do you have any last words for for like new people just getting into it? Just do it. Mm -hmm. Just start, start with what you love. When you do something that, you know, that you really love and you enjoy, then it makes it easy. It really does. Yeah, if it's fun, it's not like work. Nope. And remember to save money for taxes. <laughs> oh, there's yeah. my tip. Yeah. yeah, we'll do that on another podcast. Nobody wants to hear about that. No, <laughs> <laughs> no that's true. <laughs> You can cut that no. part out if you want to. Yeah, that's my least favorite topic. Um, okay, so Julie Gambino right. near Chicago. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your tips. And you guys can find her on the Money Making Mondays $100 thread almost every week. Oh, You're there sorry. all the time. <laughs> okay, so thanks for coming and we'll see you on Facebook. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed this. It's good to finally meet you. <laughs> nice to finally meet you too. Bye-bye. Okay. Thanks again, Julie, for coming on and listeners for tuning in. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to my podcast and I welcome any feedback you have. All of the links are below the podcast. Now get out there and find those great items and more importantly, get them listed. And as always, have a profitable, productive, and fun day on eBay. I will talk to you next week. Bye.